Hi, I'm Phil Samney, a technical consultant for Altium, and in this video, I'll show you how to use the IPC compliant footprint wizard. If you have Altium Designer installed already, you're good to go. If not, check out the link in the description below to get yourself a free trial of Altium Designer. In any PCB design, it is pretty much unavoidable that you'll have to create footprints. Creating footprints and schematic symbols is usually a pretty time-consuming process. In this video, I'd like to show you a different way which is featured in Altium Designer to really simplify and speed up this process. We'll be using the IPC compliant footprint wizard along with an example datasheet to create footprints of our own. In a recent project of mine, I've had to create quite a few different footprints, anything from QFN packages with thermal pads to more simple SOIC packages such as this one here to fine pitch PGA packages such as this memory I see on the bottom. The IPC footprint wizard can generate most of these footprints in the matter of only a couple of minutes and without entering too much information, which is really neat. And it's a tool I use pretty much every day. The IPC compliant footprint wizard is built into Altium Designer, which is really neat, so you don't have to install any extensions. And it's based on the IPC 7351 standard. The nice thing is you don't have to read through this standard or understand terribly much about what this is about as the footprint tool does most of this work for you. I'd like to show you a very simple footprint design and how quickly you can create one with the IPC compliant footprint wizard. And we'll look at, for example, this SOIC 8 pin package of a very popular IC, the NE5532 operational amplifier, which you find in most audio circuits. Typically in most data sheets, you will find some sort of land pattern or footprint example, and you have to tediously and meticulously copy over these pads and dimensions over into your ECAD tool, making sure that the reference is okay, setting origins, creating the silk screen, various layers, and creating the step and 3D model at the end of this as well. So a lot of work to be done just for a single footprint, and you might have 50 different footprints in your design. For us, luckily, we just need this page, dimensions of the package. So we might have the body width, we might have body plus lead widths, pitches, and so on. And all the information that's on this page and any parts of it, we then transfer over to our IPC compliant footprint wizard. Let me show you how. I assume you really have your own PCB library. If you haven't, all you have to do within your project is right click in your project and add new to project PCB library. I already happen to have one, which is my footprint library. And then I'm gonna to go to tools in the top bar, IPC compliant footprint wizard. This will guide you through really easily to create this SOIC 8 footprint. Click next. Now we can choose the footprint type and there's many, many different types to choose from. You can see this footprint wizard is useful for not just SOICs, not just BGAs, but QFNs, passives, and most packages you'll come across. We're interested in SOIC, which is a small outline IC, then click next. This is one of the few pages where we have to enter any information, and this information we take directly from the datasheet. The first thing I like to do is, you can see this 3D preview here, and this is not correct yet because we haven't filled in the information correctly. First thing I like to do is click on the bottom left, Generate Step Model Preview. This will then generate a more accurate 3D representation. Then we pull up our datasheet on the relevant page, and we need to find the page which contains these dimensions as shown in the middle of the IPC compliant footprint wizard. So for example, the width range H is shown in this 2D diagram here, and that's the lead to lead width, which we can find in the data sheet, which is 5.80 to 6.19. And we just copy that over. For example, if we're looking for the maximum height, we just find the maximum height, which happens to be 1.75. We would then continue typing minimum standoff height, which happens to be 0.1, and then body width range and length range. If you're unsure about what these parameters are, always make sure to check the center diagram. Usually in most data sheets, the designators, for example, E, D, A, A1, and so on, will be actually listed in the data sheet. We then have to change the number of pins, because this is an eight pin package, and these happen to be the correct lead width ranges and lead length ranges. Also happens to be that all SOIC packages have a pitch of 1.27 millimeters, and the footprint wizard automatically tells us this. If you look at the right side view here, the 3D view, this all looks aligned correctly and the 3D model has been generated appropriately to our inputs. Then all we have to do is click next. Some footprints and packages might require thermal pad and we can add that here with various thermal pad dimensions. We don't need it for this design. Next come a few pages which have been auto configured by the IPC compliant footprint wizard and we typically do not have to change. This might be the heel spacing, for example, and I typically leave that as default. The next page gives you the solder fillet option and you can choose three different levels, low density, medium density, high density, and it typically pays off to make three component variations or footprint variations depending on how dense your design will be. So you have very densely packed board, you would of course want to go with high density, but typically using medium density is what I would go for. 
usually it's fine to stick with the calculated component tolerances and it's really cool that the footprint wizard does this all for you some further tolerances the footprint wizard then shows you its calculated pad dimensions given the inputs we gave it on the first page and remember we only had to give a couple of inputs so this is really cool you can also change the pad shape rounded or rectangular in this case as I said before, usually you would have to add several different layers for the 3D model, for silk screen, mechanical assembly layer. This footprint wizard does this all for you. For example, the silk screen, which indicates, for example, placement or pin one location of the part. And you can change the silk screen line width here. 0.2 is okay. Courtyard, of course, is useful to make sure we're not overlapping components or getting them too close to each other so it's hard to assemble. Default values are fine and you can see which mechanical layers this as well as assembly information is placed on. We're almost done, and remember we didn't have to type in very much information. The IPC footprint wizard also gives us recommended naming and description, so we don't even have to worry about that. Finally, we want to add this footprint to one of our libraries. I'm just going to use my current PCB library file, and of course I want to produce a 3D step model and embed that into my footprint and into my library. Then click next, and we're done. After having only typed in a few number of dimensions, the IPC compliant footprint wizard has generated all of this information for us. It's calculated the correct pad spacing, it added silk screen, created a 3D model, gave us names and so on. If we go to 2D view, we can see the 3D model has been added and more information on mechanical layers, such as the courtyard and so on. I hope this video was useful and showed you how quickly and easily you can use Altium Designer's built-in IPC compliant footprint wizard to generate footprints quickly, accurately and efficiently. Again, you can use this footprint wizard for simple footprints such as SOE ICs, QFNs, BGAs, passives, and so on. I'd highly recommend you give it a try and test it out for yourself. If you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the Altium Academy YouTube channel to learn more about Altium Designer, PCB Design, and Electronics Engineering. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.